This is Finance for Artists and Musicians with your friend, me, Danny Plays. So this is my friend, Ashley Greer. Thank you for being on the show. Yes, I'm so happy to be here. So tell us, you're from Louisiana, right? Yeah. Love Louisiana. Louisiana's a good time. <laughs> Lots of culture here, so. Yeah. And yeah. how did you become a painter? Oh my goodness. Okay. So when I was a kid, I was uh, extremely shy. Okay. I did not want to talk to anybody. I was just very introverted and I feel like art was sort of like my voice. Um, I would like draw in school and I remember like kids coming over to my desk and being like, Hey, that looks cool. And I'd be like, thanks. (laughs) So it was kind of like a conversation starter. Yeah. Um, then it became like an outlet. So I just, I just kept it up. I feel like all those years, because I feel like when when you're a kid, like everybody draws, right? So I just really just stuck with it. Did you know that you were like, you know, had a talent for it, or was it something that you just developed over time? Um, I just found it is like really fun, but later on in life, I was probably, I want to say like third or fourth grade. I think it was third grade. Um, my art teacher was like, Hey, you know, you're pretty good at this. I feel like you should be in talented art. And she was like, go get tested for it. She pushed me to do it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to test for it. I was really shy. Like I was like, all right. (laughs) I tested and I got in. And after that, it really changed a lot of things. I, I feel like the art teachers I had were really amazing and they really pushed me. They pulled, they pulled me out of some of my classes. I had to like miss PE some days, but you know, it was worth it. That's cool. So you guys had advanced art growing up. Mm -hmm. We didn't didn't have that. Yeah, it was, I think it was a new thing actually. So we didn't have like an actual class for it, but we had like a teacher who, you know, jump around and um, pull us out. So yeah, it it was, it was cool. Is anyone else in your family, an artist or a painter or anything like that? Mm. my older brother is really talented he can draw he can design he is really creative um I saw him draw when I was a kid and I feel like that was also really inspiring because I wanted to be like my older brother so I would say he is and I have a grandma who's really good at painting as well so it's in the blood a little bit a little bit yeah yeah. 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 A lot of uh, my family, not my like immediate or U.S. based family members, but like um, a lot of the ones in Holland are all types of artists. And I didn't realize that until like maybe like six years ago that I had so many artists in my bloodline. I'm like, oh, I found my tribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, that makes sense. OK. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the odd one out. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So did you, throughout high school, you started taking more advanced, like, art classes, painting classes. How did it kind of develop and manifest? Yeah. Um, so I had a talented art teacher who would pull me out of class uh, when I was going to Dubok, which is a smaller school. Um, and I was, like, the only kid in talented art. As I, as I went through school, there were, like, a few more kids that would, you know, come in. Um but it was when I transferred over to Ruston. They actually had a talented art class. And once I started taking that class, it really, I was older, I was learning new things from a new teacher. And one summer, everything just kind of like exploded for me. Like cool. I, um, I actually painted for the fun of it like I used to when I was a kid. It wasn't just like a chore, some some class I had to take. It was like, hey, um, I, I'm just going to sit down this summer and paint and see see what I create. So that summer I sat down and I painted and I painted and I painted. <laughs> it was like a waterfall of paintings. And I came back senior year. I showed my art teacher and he was like, you did this? And he had been so hard on me like all year. Like, and I was like, why doesn't this teacher like me? He would be like, you can do better than that. You know, like, <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to drop out of this class because this guy is so hard on me. Um, 
but then I came back that next year and I, I was like, Hey, this is everything that you taught me. And, you know, I, I put it to work on my own and he's like, Oh, wow. Like, you know, you did really good. I was waiting on that. That's why I was so hard on you. I was like, yeah, okay. It makes sense now. <laughs> um, and that year I also started taking commission work too, cool. um, in high school. Were so people approaching you to paint for them or how did you start your business like that? Uh, I, some of my first paintings, um, I remember posting online and my friends were so supportive. Like they were great. They're like, Oh my gosh, Ashley, like this is, this is so amazing. Like it's very inspirational. And I feel like you should really keep doing this super supportive people. And I was like, okay, I'm going to keep it up. And then some of my friends were like, we don't have much money, but like, here's 10 bucks. You know, if you, <laughs> if you, um, paint us like a picture of a dog or something, I was like, okay. So it just kept flowing that way. Like it was just the whole community who, who like really, you know, built me up and supported me. So that's was, so cool. Yeah. How has cool. your painting style developed over the years? Good question. Um, I feel like the style, especially when, like when you get started, you, you, you sort of like look at a picture and then you paint the picture, right? Or like you have like a still life in front of you and you like paint the still life. But then as you progress or as you get older, you try to branch out and like find your own style. And you try to like mimic other other styles and you're like okay I, well, I really like what this artist does I'm gonna try to put some of this in here and then you you keep doing that and you keep doing that and eventually it took me a long time to figure this out I still feel like I'm figuring out my style but I feel like being open to new ideas and just being fluid um and just keep on keeping on <laughs> mm-hmm. really really helped out a lot you know just not being afraid to make the wrong decision because it doesn't really have rules like you really can do what you want to do however you feel really you know experiment and yeah then it just you know creates a life of its own I don't know I'm still trying to figure that part out too so yeah it changes all the time I think as you change your art reflects Mm -hmm. that yeah and different mediums too like using different mediums really helps Mm. like if you use ink it helps you become more fluid and loose if you're too tight you know like sometimes um artists can be too tight like just draw from your wrist but if you use a medium like ink on like a bigger piece of paper you are more fluid and you can use your shoulder a little more and when you paint from your shoulder or draw from your shoulder it gives your drawing or your painting more life because it's like more lively it's like closer to the heart you know yeah so i would see i would think i'm no painter by any means but i think it would be the opposite because like ink would be so finite you know where paint like you can kind of cover up or mix colors or something like that well if it doesn't work out you can always like rip the paper out (laughs) it's true true. true. (laughs) i've done that many many times (laughs) but yeah painting in a way is like well, you know, it doesn't matter if you mess up because you can just paint over it and it's fine. But ink, you have, you know, if you if you if you spill ink on the paper, you know, you're like you're kind of like done for it, unless you turn it into some, some birds or something like Bob Ross. Yeah. But <laughs> you know, it's just it it is fun experimenting because when you experiment more, you get to discover new styles and you know, add that into your paintings and drawings. So, you know, how would you describe your style now? Oh my gosh, I have uh, not thought about that. <laughs> or I haven't had somebody ask me that question in a while because it has changed a lot recently. Um, I paint with like a lot of really bright colors. It makes me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, I don't know, I just really like bright colors. Like I, I love I love large scale piece, pieces. So if it's bright and it's large, and there's a message in it. I, I want to attract people um, through the color. And w- once they come in, I love hiding really small detail mm. inside of the piece. So 
they zoom in a little bit, you know. You but it changes all the time, you know. It's right now it's bright and colorful, but maybe tomorrow or a year from now it'll be all neutral. So, but right now it's like very busy and bright. I love that, and that's fun. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I always wanted to know this: when you do like a huge mural, how do you get everything in proportion? Because it's like larger than scale or like larger than life scale i really break it down um about if i'm working for example the four-story mural i just worked on i think i had like bite-sized pieces of like two foot squares Mm -hmm. and i had a mock-up on my phone so i would just zoom in to each square on my phone and I would know like what square I was at. I'd be like, oh, I'm right here. So I just, I really just got to trust it, trust every line that's in this square. And if I follow it, I'm sure if I step back, it'll look all right. So and it's a lot of stepping back too. Yeah. You know, after you finish a main piece, you really got to get off the lift, take a step back and see if it actually looks good. So a lot of back and forth. That's so cool. So when did you become a full-time artist? Did you have odd jobs first? Were you fighting it? And then Mm. you accepted who you were? What was your journey like? So I was working in like a personal training studio at first. Um, I loved health because my mom did. She got, that was, that's her passion, fitness. So I was like, oh, I'm going to like, I'm going to do this while I figure this whole art thing out. Um, I was trying to really figure out the path of being an artist. And I realized that you really just got to take the leap of faith. You know, so I, um, I, I quit my jobs and I just went full on, which is <laughs> so, so scary. That's brave. Yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm fine living in a box for a little bit. Uh, I'm still young, so I'm just going to take the leap of faith, figure it out. And that's sort of like what I did. <laughs> I took odd jobs and I promoted myself as much as I could. Like, hey, uh, would, would you like that wall painted? <laughs> and they're like, okay, yeah, sure. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Um, and eventually I think it was just... A, <laughs> many many hours of sacrificing a lot and not having much and it just it just eventually paid off I feel like um but I've been full-time now for about I would say full-on and like good for four years (laughs) but the year before that uh my friend and I Grant Terry we traveled together and He's also a musician, so um, he got to show me this whole world of artists, which was really inspiring. And I was like, wow, these people are artists, and they're really doing it, and they're loving their life, and they're free, and they're flexible, and they get to do what they love. That was really inspiring, and I was like, okay, I I can do it too. (laughs) But it was like a year of seeing other people do it and believing in myself, Um, but then the, the year after that, I was like, I'm going full on, baby. <laughs> and I just started painting a lot and made it happen. So. I love that. So it was like year after you got off tour with Grant, Terry, mm-hmm. that you became a full-time artist. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What were you doing before? Before that, I was working in marketing um, for a few gyms. I, I, I kept with the fitness because yeah. I thought maybe I would like get into personal training and maybe be a health coach. But there was always this little thing pulling at my heart. It was like, Another you're feeling. supposed to be an artist, you know? And eventually I, I, I had to do it. I couldn't, you know, just cut it off. So I, I just took the leap. It's like, you know, marketing is the closest I can get to creative in this industry. Um, I really enjoyed, you know, graphic design and being creative and promoting health and fitness because it's, it's great. You know, you you get to help people, but I say, I need a little bit more, you know, I I need to, I need to really get my hands dirty and like paint and 
I feel like that's what I'm supposed to give the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like I was selling myself short a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just did marketing. Well, that's a good skill to pick up as an artist. Mm-hmm. How does social media kind of play into being a painter and, and your business? It's huge. It's the whole reason why I'm even able to do it, you know? Um, I learned that if you want to be an artist, you really have to learn business too. You have to learn how to market yourself, put yourself out there. When you have a piece of work, you can't just, you know, keep it for yourself and yeah. let nobody see it. Like, put it out there. Keep putting it out there. It doesn't matter if you only get a few likes or a few people see it. Just keep pushing it out. Don't be afraid. And eventually, it's going to keep building and people are going to see it. And they'll see one piece of work that you did like a couple years ago and find inspiration in that. And they're like, I want something like that too, hanging in my home. Um, Social media really, really changed a lot of things for me Um, because you post one piece, somebody says, Hey, I really like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And there you go. There's your, (laughs) there's your food for the day, (laughs) you know? (laughs) But eventually it really grew for me. And I just feel really grateful for that. Now it's a fun thing because you know, creating videos and, and content is like an art in itself, you know, mm-hmm. it, it gives a fun element to it. Sometimes I could get a little burnout with just painting, but if I make a video on top of that, and then after I finish the painting, I get to lay down at, you know, on my bed and go through my phone and create this whole, you know, story and show it. Um, that's fun. That's fun too. And I feel like people people need to see the you know behind the scenes yeah the process is really cool to mm-hmm. watch not only like the final product but it always makes you wonder like how do they do this mm-hmm. especially as like another aspiring painter like I think you kind of pick up on subtle things that you might want to incorporate into your own process yeah other um like younger artists too um they reach out to me a lot and so I try to make sure you know, I'm, you know, giving a little bit of like, hey, this is uh, the mediums that I use. You know, this is what works for me. Uh, but also people really like to get to know the artist as well. Like, what kind of space are they working in? Like, mm. you know, they like to see you working and, you know, in your in your element to get to know you a little bit more. You know? Yeah. So I feel like that's important. Just being raw, I feel, I feel like helps a lot. So... Yeah, and cool. it's cool that you are, like, giving back to the community by being accessible to other aspiring painters and stuff like that. Yeah, I hope to do that um, more one day. I would really like to mentor mm-hmm. other artists. Um, after, you know, I finish this phase of my life, I really would love to teach, like, art lessons and do that whole thing, too. You'd so. be so good at that. It would be fun. <laughs> It would be so much fun. Totally see you doing that. Hopefully. How do you know when you have a whole collection of art that's like ready for a gallery? How does that whole process work? How do you know where you want to show it? It's really just connecting with people and Mm -hmm. the environment that I'm in. Like in Ruston, I connected with Ruston Artisans. Uh, Judy Knoll, she's the gallery owner there. And... um, I really found a lot of inspiration through her. And so we just got together one day and we we're like, hey, let's do this kind of thing, you know? What do we want to give to the community? And one of them was called like Cosmic Dance. So it's like, okay, let's create uh, some fun pieces, um, but also give everybody these 3D glasses. So whenever they look at the paintings, the lines on the on the paintings dance to the music. So. It's really about working with other people, I feel like. Um, I haven't done like too many gallery shows. I've been primarily focused on murals mm. lately. Um, but the next phase of my life, I, this current phase, I would really like to start showing more work in galleries. Because, I mean, y- y- I gotta switch it up, you know? Like, yeah. I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta keep having fun. 
I don't want to get too burnt out on one thing and, you know, and then despise <laughs> totally arts, but it, art really, really gives you a lot of room to, uh, you know, be fluid and switch it up a bit, but definitely. And there's like an intimacy with galleries too, where you get mm-hmm. to create art that's in people's home and can inspire them every day. Yeah. Yeah. It, working with galleries is really cool because you get to really connect with more people Mm -hmm. you know versus working on a huge wall you're by yourself and you just like it's just (laughs) you and the wall (laughs) you know you're just talking to the wall um but yeah just connecting with with other people and be like hey what would you like to see in a gallery show you know or Mm -hmm. you know coming up coming up with a cool idea like combining music and art yeah that was that's neat so definitely bringing different types of expressions together Mm -hmm. like the whole fusion yeah like heightens the experience Mm -hmm. yeah how do you know how to price things how you value you know what a piece of art should be worth while grant and i were on tour in new york there was a really talented painter there um and i wanted to take advice from her because she was doing all the things right and it's like so i asked the same question Mm -hmm. how do you know how to price your work and she said you price your work however you feel like if you think a piece is really good and it means a lot to you then price it for however however much you want and i was like oh okay she said don't sell yourself short either you know okay I'll try to I'll try to keep that in mind uh so it's a lot I always hear her voice in my head saying that um and I also keep in mind the the scale as well like Mm -hmm. if a canvas is bigger obviously it's going to be a little bit more um I don't track my time too much I, I, I like to paint really fast so max working on like a big piece would be maybe like a couple weeks on and off. Um, so I take that into consideration as well. And the mediums that I use, if I'm mixing a lot of mediums, um, like texture, uh, that'll also increase the value of my work. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I feel like I, I always go back to, to the artists in New York saying that. I'm yeah. Like, okay. Because I'm like, I know there's a lot of artists out there who are wondering, how do I monetize this? Because I want to be a full-time artist just like Ashley is, you know? So that's like cool to hear your perspective on that. If you think it's worth a lot, then it is worth a lot. Yeah. Uh, if you think it's not, then it probably it probably still is, you know? Now, the range, like the commission range galleries take, do they, does it vary greatly? Can you negotiate that? How does that work? Yeah, I feel like it's really working with the with the gallery um it just depends who you're working with and mm-hmm. you know different cities and all that but you know if if you if you really build a good connection with the gallery and you know offer offer things in a different kind of way then you know you can obviously negotiate like marketing if you offer marketing or some other valuable asset then yeah, you, you could maybe get a good deal on, like, commissions and everything. Um, yeah, just working with, with everyone because I feel like there are some really good people who really value, like, artists and and their work. So just building connections yeah. really has helped me. And finding that happy <laughs> that. medium. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is, like, a big conversation in tech, but... Um, what is your take on NFTs and uh, like leveraging that as an artist? I think it's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, I would love to get more into NFT NFTs. Um, I just think it's awesome that you can just post, you know, a picture of your painting or, you know, like a animated version of your painting, mm-hmm. and you know, a lot of people a lot of people see that, and you get to ex- exchange crypto. Like, that is so cool. Like, that is really innovative, you know. Uh, I created a few NFTs in the past. Obviously, I didn't, like, market it that much because I just wanted to get my feet wet. But yeah, I think it's really neat. And I feel like we should probably hop on the bandwagon before, you know, it, it completely takes off. 
Definitely. Um, you really could leverage um, your work with that. I don't, in, in what kind of way? I have no idea, you know? The possibilities are endless, but I feel like there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. Do you think that you're going to start integrating that more into your business? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm actually working on a collection right now. I'm combining my paintings um, with a mix of digital art. Uh, and I also would like to turn them into like animations. Cool. Um, I know a lot of people are really interested in like uh, the cards, NFT cards and characters and, mm-hmm. and all of that. So I'm kind of like taking that path but in a different kind of way. Uh, So I can't like speak too much on that (laughs) because I'm still trying to figure out what exactly my collection is going to look like, but I'm definitely using the NFTs as leverage. Yeah. You know, I don't know how yet, but you know, (laughs) it's all going to come together eventually. For sure. sure. If you you stay focused on it and consistent, you know? Yeah. You probably have like a gallery in the metaverse too. Yeah. Which then you can reach people globally yeah i was thinking uh i had a really cool idea uh because you know they have these uh really cool goggles and everything you can wear and you can step into the metaverse and do all these cool things i was thinking it would be so cool to step into a gallery but have like your paintings on the walls yeah but each painting you look at you can step into it and experience this whole this whole like emotion of the painting and you know all all the intentions behind the painting would be in this whole experience but a three-dimensional experience Uh, and then you could like step out and go to the next painting wow so yeah that would be so trippy yeah i was thinking (laughs) that too it's like oh gotta figure out a way to make that happen i'm sure i'm sure people are gonna are gonna come up with ways to do that but i'm thinking that something really cool to work on I, I do not know how in the world i would you know <laughs> how i would do that P- people are really talented on there you know yeah. all the animators and everything it's like mm-hmm. how in the world do you do this like that is like super talent <laughs> <laughs> tech and art is really coming together to solve this issue of ownership and copyrights mm-hmm. that have kind of plagued artists with yeah. no solutions for decades you know yeah yeah and it, it's so cool that, you know, when you buy an NFT like that, that's yours. So, you know, you get like, you get all the coding and everything, you know, but yeah. also, you know, there's like a, like a, like a string of ownership too. Yes. It, it's transparent from what I understand. You yeah. Know, you you get to see, see everyone and, who's owned it. Mm-hmm, like they'll see that you created that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, th- I think that's really neat. What advice do you have for aspiring painters? When you're ready and if you truly believe that that's your path, take the leap of faith and maybe just like, I wouldn't say just like quit your job and like, you know, go full <laughs> on like I did because that was, I mean, it was yeah. <laughs> But if you if you really want to do it, I would say main advice: post on social media. Just keep posting. Don't be afraid. Just put it all out there. Put it all out there, and work on it every day. And eventually, somebody will see that piece and be like, "Hey, I really like that." And it'll give you more confidence and it's just going to keep happening and keep happening. It's going to be like a snowball. And then eventually, you know, you'll be a full-time painter or, you know, whatever your your avenue is, your journey. Um, Don't be afraid to post and be open on social media for sure. Take those leaps of faith. Every time you feel scared about doing something like maybe challenge yourself a little bit and just, you know, just, just do it. Same thing with using different mediums. If you're scared to use oils, maybe just give it a try, you know, mm-hmm. and start experimenting with different mediums because usually when you're afraid to do something, that's where that's where the gold mine is, you know? Yeah. 
I mean, in some ways, your life is a blank canvas. Like, your life mm-hmm. will be whatever you put in it. Mm-hmm. So, and it's up to you. You get to cr- be the creator of your own life. Yeah. And I think that's something, like, every artist has to face and make the jump. And eventually, it's like, okay, I can do what I'm supposed to do and what's safe and comfortable. Or I can do what feels risky and scarier, but what I'm being called to do. Yeah. Yeah. What's going to make you happy at the end of the day? How can you best live with yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I would also say um, uh, the most beneficial thing I did on this journey, of, you know, being an artist, being a painter, was learning business. I, uh, at the beginning of this, I, I really didn't, I, I took the leap of faith, but I also prepared for it. I bought a ton of books on business. Oh, yeah? Yes, a ton of books. And I also, I also spent like a, a thousand dollars on um, a course, like save for it. I was like, there's a social media course that I really need to take. Uh, you know, I hustled up the money, spent it on that, and it changed my life. Really? <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I got to keep doing this. You know, if I want to do this whole art thing, I'm really going to have to learn about business. I'm going to have to learn how to promote myself. Um, so I bought like two different courses on marketing. Um, Amazon got on Amazon, bought some books. I, I mean, ten books. Anybody can afford yes. a, a book, and it's gonna. Ch- it will change. It will change everything. Just one good business book, you know, it'll change your mindset. So, um, that would that would probably be like my biggest advice. I think is you, you have to learn. You have to learn business. As much as that of a drag <laughs> that may sound to yeah. like a really creative mind. It will benefit you and eventually it'll become like it'll just be a part of who you are like you won't even think about it you know but in the back of your in the back of your head you're like okay i gotta i gotta do this this and this you know i gotta keep this in alignment i gotta you know it you'll just you'll just start to do it Mm -hmm. it it'll it'll really pay off investing in your in yourself first and then maybe taking a leap of faith. Maybe not just <laughs> jumping in. <laughs> I feel like as much as you prepare, you just you just have to jump in. Like you're just yeah. like, is this the time? I don't really know, but yeah. it's happening. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll be fine if you just you know. But I do recommend uh, business books and you know courses for sure. Even now, I I I I, I try to learn as much as I can. Yeah. Um, Is there a book that you would recommend for people to start off with? The OG, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. Art Cure. The Art Cure. Because oh. um, there's this lady who was also an artist, and she um, she wanted to own her own art gallery, and you really felt like she, you were in her life, you know, and you were you got to experience this whole thing of, like, how she did it all. So The Art Cure is a really good book, too. To read awesome um, that's a great recommendation mm-hmm. so tell us what are you working on now what's next for you I would really love to do more gallery shows I had so much fun I just had a gallery show uh a couple nights ago it was the first one in like over five years and I just had so much fun I mean <laughs> it was just a good time and I want to do that more yeah in the past it's been murals I love murals but now I feel like gallery shows would be wonderful in different cities too yeah you know getting to connect with you know different types of people come do some in cultures. nashville and new york that would be awesome. <laughs> girl yes that'd be so fun yeah so how can people connect with you and follow your art instagram would be probably the best ashley girl artwork tiktok as well um ashley girl artwork uh, I don't know much about TikTok, <laughs> so I'm trying. I'm trying to figure that one out. Um, but Instagram is probably my my main platform right now. Mm-hmm. So if you have any questions, you can just DM me there, and I would love to answer. Awesome. Any so questions. Give your girl a follow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. This was so much fun. Oh yes, girl. I would love to do it again. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so glad we got this opportunity to hang out. Yeah. You know, I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Yeah.
that and like I totally forgot that I actually spent a lot of time learning about business before I even took that leap of faith. You know, when I was still in California at the time, um, I had a uh, boss who was amazing. And he was like, here, actually, here's, here's this book. It was uh, Your Five Strengths. So I think that was the first book I read. It was like Your, your Top Strengths. So I read the book and I um, took this quiz and it told me where my five strengths were. Don't focus, it, focus on your weaknesses. Focus on your strengths because you can hire people on who will pick up that slack. Don't don't spend your time, you know, ch trying to – because you can't be good at everything, you know. No, yeah. Just focus on these fives. These five. And I was innovative, futuristic, uh, responsible. Oh, strength finder. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I've That was the very first business book that I read. This one gave it to me. And then from there, I was so obsessed with – learning more about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just kept buying like books and books and books and books. Like yeah. I have like, you know, a whole bookshelf at home and some books I, kept, I just kept reading over and over. Like Rich Dad Poor Dad, I read that one a couple of times and The Secrets of a Millionaire Mind, I read that a couple of times. And uh, Four Hour work, work Week too. that one helped a lot, but it was a thick book. So I, yeah. I was like, <laughs> every now and then I would like hop in and read, but I was like, okay, that's something I wanna keep in mind you know, efficiency. Um, so yeah, I for totally forgot that I even went through <laughs> all that. And I moved to San Francisco for art school after high school. I was like, God, I, just, I was like, um, 19 years old. And I told you the leap of faith thing that I do a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to go to art school in California, 19 years old. I packed my suitcases. I got hopped on a plane and I went to California. I went moved to San Francisco. Wow. Didn't really know anybody. I did have a sister in San Francisco, stepsister. You stayed with her? Uh, I did not move in with her right away. I had to figure out um, couch surf, like a living, yeah, <laughs> yeah. a couch surf. <laughs> Been there for, for people from people who, people who lived in Ruston that I didn't really know too well. But I was like, the Ruston people are gonna take care <laughs> of me, you know. So I moved in with them, and then moved in with my sister for a month. And then I was like trying to figure out what I was gonna do because. I had plans to go into art school. Yeah. Girl, my sister was like, Ashley, are you sure you want to go to art school? Because this is going to be like $300,000 to get your degree. And I freaked out. I was like, I don't know how the heck I'm going to be able to do that. And I just moved all the way across the country <laughs> you know, to go to, to go to school here. I can't just tell people, oh, I'm moving back. You know, a week yeah. later, just kidding. <laughs> so I really had to figure it out. So did you end up going to school? Or for, I, or? I went to art school for a little bit. I just took online courses. Okay. And I was going to start living on campus. But right before that, I decided to drop out. It's like, there's no freaking way I'm going to I'm gonna do this. Because I feel like I, I can be an artist on my own, but I have to figure out how to do it. You yeah. Know? I didn't feel like... You didn't need to learn how to be an artist. You just needed yeah. to learn how to like have I the could, business mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I could use the experiences... And everything I learn here, yeah, I, I can use it in my art, but also I can maybe learn from people, you know, mm -hmm. um, like the boss I was telling you about, he gave me the book. Um, so I was like, there's no, there's no reason for me to go get in a massive amount of debt when I feel like it'll be more beneficial to, you know, really take notes from people who have had the same experience. So that was, a. Uh, that was huge. I, I, then I also realized that um, working a lot to you know support myself. I was 19 years old. I was working all the time, you know, I, at, at gyms. I worked like at three different gyms, <laughs> and I was so exhausted. I was like, oh, I cannot do this nine to five life anymore. I really can't. Yeah, I'm, you're I, burnt out. I was burnt out, and also really creative. So I really have to figure out a way to like be my own boss. I want to be a boss babe. <laughs> yeah. So that was another reason why I started reading, reading a lot and, you know, doing little mentorships and, and everything. So I feel just like, I feel like that's a perspective. Like I started to develop later on in life. Cause I grew up in a world where it's like, you're going to college. Like there's no situation in mm -hmm. your life where you're not. Yeah. Cause I didn't want to, I was like acting 
more so at the time. So I started like modeling and acting and then oh, I was wow. like, it's like as an artist, you are a solopreneur, you are running a business. Mm -hmm. Even if you're the best artist in the world, if you can't negotiate and stand up for yourself and like handle the business side of it, like you'll be taken advantage of or yeah. it won't be as sustainable as you would want it to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really gave you like, um, you know, good insight and structure and everything, you know. That's amazing. I my um, <laughs> my mom, she wanted me to go to college too. Uh, but she wanted me, you know, she's, my mom is Filipino. So she wanted me to be a doctor or a nurse. Yes. So whatever she found out, I wasn't going to be doing that. <laughs> she was like, how are you going to be able to support yourself? And you, you cannot be an artist. But eventually she was like, oh, my girl's, you know, happy. So yeah, but, yeah, it ended up working out though. I think that's just, I think that's something like if your parents are artists, it's even harder for them to comprehend because oh, they're yeah. like, there's no security in this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're like a liability to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, we can't yeah. do this if you fail. <laughs> like, yeah, and she's like, who's going to take care of me when I'm old? You know, yeah. like, it's, it, no, you are. no. Yeah, that is, that is scary. Yeah, mom was like, I, I didn't come all this way down to America to for my girl to be an artist <laughs> but then later on like a couple years after that she was like oh i see you i see you happy so it's all it's all good yeah you know but it, i i could see why you know if, if you graduate high school and you don't if you don't go to college right away i can see why that would be a scary you know like you're a little That's bird more risk yeah <laughs> uh -huh. you're like a little baby bird out there in the wild <laughs> yeah <laughs> I feel like college is getting so expensive, though. Like, more people, especially artists, are just passing on it because it's, yeah. you know, you'll be in debt that will hinder your life for, like, until you're, like, 50 or 60. And yeah. it's like, well, then that's not really a system that's setting you up for success. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, why, why you know, spend thousands of dollars on this degree and then start working, but... To pay off, <laughs> to pay off all the debt. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Like he, you learn a lot and everything, but you also gotta, you know, think about you. And it may not be not may not be for you. You know, like yeah. Every everybody, I can see like if you're a doctor, if you want to be a doctor, yeah, heck yeah, go to yeah, school, absolutely. You know? yeah, of course, <laughs> please, <so>. if, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, please go to school. Please go to school. <laughs> We don't want to like bootleg doctors over here, yeah. but, but if you're an artist, you know, maybe reconsider, <laughs> unless you get like a really good scholarship somewhere, a good setup or, you know, oh, that's another reason why I really wanted to be an artist too, is like the flexibility, like, you know, just being your own boss. Yes. The flexibility, you know, although I do say really busy, uh, it is nice to yeah, if you have an appointment or if you have like a, a dinner date, you know, mm -hmm. you can do it. You know, you have no limitations. Yeah, unless there's like a show or something. But yeah, if you want to take a break and go, you know, walk your dog, like that's beautiful to me. It's really way more easy to protect your environment and, you know, keep keep those uh, positive people around. So I am also very particular on... You know, it, I don't hang out with very many people. I, well, I kind of do hang out with a lot of people. But <laughs> you have a lot of friends. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> but the people I work with, though, uh, I really, I, I really got lucky with some really, really talented people. You know, and I'm like, hey, do you want to work together on this project? And they're like, heck yeah, let's do it. You know, I love having that option. I didn't even think about that until you said that. So another thing to be grateful for. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Do you get lonely when you're? painting a lot or do you meet up with other painters to have company i'll get lonely yeah but i i usually like to um invite people over to the house and like hang out with people at the same time i'm painting uh i just learned this term it was um body doubling where mm. you get more done by having like another person there that's true mm -hmm. so if all right even though if, if they're watching like TV or something, you know, like 
my friends are just like laid out, you know, on the couches and like a conversation and like every now and then, but like watching a good show, like I'll be like painting and I'm super productive. Like I'll be knocking it out, getting it done. But sometimes I do get lonely if I'm by myself and I'm like, mm, this is a drag. I don't have anybody to talk to. Yeah. You know? and so, so, but sometimes it's also nice because, uh, I can just like turn on like music or, you know, yeah, a course or something. And yeah, that, that's nice too. Some stress is good because it helps you get things done, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, life's, a, life's about learning, learning balance. Yeah. And I'm learning that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to create new habits. Yeah. I'm like that with packing. Like I will leave it until like the night before 2 a.m. And I'm like, why? My, yeah. None of my clothes are clean. <laughs> like... I'm tired. Yeah. I gotta get up in three hours. <laughs> but it has to be done. Yeah. Nobody else can do it. <laughs> yeah, I like that with some projects too. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like that. <laughs> should we go get some ice cream? Oh yeah, we should definitely go get some ice cream. Alright. <laughs> This content is for general information purposes only and do not constitute accounting, legal, tax, or other professional advice. You can seek appropriate advice from an accountant, financial planner, lawyer, or other professional.